It's the Fan Home Build the Enterprise D model kit. It's magazine number 29. We're up to part kit 111. Hi guys, Ralph here. I, pff, a year ago, a year ago, I would have never thought we would get to here, let alone just two magazines away from. Once this is done, because of the years come with four kits anyway, 111, 12, 13, 14, there are only six more after and two magazines. I've asked, I've asked, can you please send me the ball? No. So, there we go. The parts are in here. Let's have a look at the magazine like we usually do. So we have a sneak peek of all these four parts. We have the sections there. It looks like we're going to be doing... I know we're doing stuff on the, sec on the back of the saucer. And I think that might be complete. No. Oh, we've got the underneath section as well to do from where that fits. So that's next one. More stuff on the nacelle. The cell. More nacelle and the captain's yacht. And we have... That's part which goes side of here and more nacelle stuff, goodies. So full assembly there, we'll go through this very soon on at least 111, I'll jump to part there. So we have the synopsis on here for Rightful Air. Garon comes back, he's Garon, definitely Garon. Hold on a minute, he's not. <sighs> a second chance, oh, it's Will Riker. It's definitely Will Riker. No, of course it is. Oh no, it's not. It's Thomas Riker. Um, Timescape, I love that episode because everything was just frozen and, and it was just a, a really good fun episode and done by Adam Nimoy, uh, Leonard's um, Spock, Mr. Sp yeah, Mr. Spock's um, son. So there he is. Because actually, it's a really good arc for, for Adam Nimoy. Because he, he used to be... In, I don't think he was in the original series. It might have been a background. I'm not... On, don't, don't hold me on that one. But he used to be on set as well. And there's a, there's a good outtake where um, Leonard Nimoy is sat there with his ears on. And they actually did him up with his own ears. And walked onto the set. It was absolutely brilliant. So, we have Descent. One of my favourite... Episodes a very strange ship, Borg ship. It kind of shows that yes, it's a Borg ship, yes, it's got the aesthetics for it, but it's been cobbled together by a lot of different things. But then again, that's what Borgs are. But then they should be more uh, uniform. Don't know. That was a season um, cliffhanger at season six, so we are on now. Season 7, so the synopsis on here for continuing mission, which is great. The adventure never ends. Because you've got Picard there, sort of part of the Picard showing all the, the crew in the redone Enterprise D. Spoiler alert for the end of Picard Season 3. Descent Part 2 with Law being shut down. That's a big spoiler for end, the end there. And we have Liaisons, where... Somebody likes Captain Picard. Somebody likes Captain Picard. So kidnaps him and like, like, no, like they don't. We have interface where Jordy tries to find his mom. Simple as. So we have part kit one eleven. We have. Have we watched in previous previous ones? I will be going through fitting these onto the part which came with this part. I already have bits before, and I have parts like this that Dan from Dan's Model Universe, the DMU, go check him out on YouTube, that he's already painted these for me, and they will go in place instead of, but we will go through anyway. Some parts I will be fitting to that proper one, the, the, the non-proper one, but the one following along, some stickers, some windows. Not much to go on here which is good. So some transporter parts there, but we are coming really, really close to the end. We're slamming to the end of this one, which I'm finally, then we can get on with some other stuff. Uh, right, let's get this unbagged and let's have a look at what we've got. So we're on stage 111. So retrieve back the big, massive, silly piece. We had from last time that we already did put two window, four windows in. Right, so there we have that way round, upside down. I need, because, yes, tweezers, windows in there. I need a, to get rid of these a second, they're in the way. Now, these should only go in one way. It's down the bottom here. It's either the long way bottom or the long way top on the pieces of the plastic, which I think is long way top. 
as you are viewing. Yeah, that fits a lot better there. And I've got that in the wrong one. That's fine. I mean, the window management does not matter. The... I'm sure the guy, I'm sure Andrew Probert, when he made the Enterprise D, went, oh, hold on a minute, oh no, that needs to be switched on. No, of course it didn't. If you want your Enterprise to have that light to be on and that light to be off, do we want? It's the randomness of this. The problem thing with it is, is you see these things, great. So, yeah, so we now these two new parts over here and some AM screws, which got a lot of anyway. It's a screwdriver at ready. AM two, a three. Some of these feel, for some reason, a little bit long, and I have got a funny feeling I'm going to burst through. The newer ones look a little bit odd. Right, AR I have on that one, and AL I have on that one. That means everything. Right, R A L A. Ah, LA. What? Then secure the windows with reflective panels RA11C. The right one goes in the left side. So, that way around potentially. No. Right. The R goes in 11C, which this is the R. Okay, so silver side up or silver side down? I think silver side down. Doesn't look like it fits. Because this is these are important parts. They've got a pin right down here. So I have a try if I can get you in. There's a pin right here, and there's a screw hole here. Now the screw hole obviously um, fits there, which has to go there, but that has to go in down there. <sighs> It fits like that. Uh, it doesn't fit like that, it goes under. I think the problem is probably me. I don't know if it goes that way around at all. It does, it goes silver side up, because it's me, hooray. So, both sides in. That and that. An AM screw goes in a holding place. Yeah, should have seen that with a wedge actually, to be honest. Too distracted. I mean, this is exciting. This is where it finishes. Yay. Like I say, before screwing, which if you can feel it tight there, if you want to continue with it, it's your own fault when they break. But when you feel a little tension and you can't do any more, that's fine. These are both now in, not loose at all. So we have now, um, these parts. Uh, is that all the light that the windows are putting in? Can't be. Turn this round. <sighs> right. So finally pressing the red port side formation light and the green starboard side lens into position on the outer edges. Right. So this is now going to go... Right. This is going to go that way. So... Work your orientation out. This is port, because this is the under underneath of it. This is the centre section right here. Let's get you out a bit better, I can show you. This is the centre section here. This is underneath. This is going to be port, and this is going to be starboard. So, port and starboard are exactly left, red, green, right. POSH was always the acronym of port, out, starboard, home, P-O-S-H. So what the posh kids used to do, they used to go to wherever on their boats, as long as they were on the port side, out, starboard side home. Don't know what that means to be honest. I've done plenty of cruise ships, and to be honest, it doesn't make any sense at home at, at, at all. So, right, uh, we have the, the emitters now, transporter emitters. Where do they go? They go, because they are in place, they're wedged in place, all right. It looks like they're fully symmetrical anyway, and a nice fit. So, yeah, okay, so, good, that doesn't come out. Notice I did that on the um, paper. As I've got a nice cutting mat anyway, so it doesn't matter so much. Oh, not again, come on, Phantom. Yeah. They've done it again. 
They're basically, Edelmoss used to do these, and I know some people do, and Dan does from DMU, does paint these, uh, he paints them gold, but then he washes between them, so it makes them more stand out, but these are kind of, mm, they're not gold, but <sighs> Edelmoss used to put tape on the back of these. So all you do is get the tape, which I think is these two. The, um, yes, the 1-1 one, one Gs, because these are black. Oh no, these are clear. Okay, so I think these are probably going to be on here. So 1-1, one, one, let me I'll check on 1-1 one, one H. That's when you get this proper. 1-1 one, one H, transport emitters, pad sticker, um, N and O. Ns are the four that are on here. N is insulator sticker. O of two of them. We have four. Really lot, really. Right, so they go one, two, and then you split those on there and there of these on the source and we get round to it. So I'm ignoring that for a second. Those are, bl those are clear ones. Those are also ends. They are, where's the O's? I think we do cut some into place anyway. Cut two strips and the isolation of those just to hold the cable in place in the right spot. Yeah, because that's going to be a little problem later on. Where do the O's go? Oh, come on. So these are G's. These three M's are definitely G's. Oh, yeah, yeah. G's and H's are damn. Where do the O's go? I know I've lost one there. Ah, the O's, right. The O's go on the, for the diffusing of the, oh, what do you call it? The nacelles, cool. Right, so I need to put double side tape these onto those, fit them on there and there, and then get the saucer out. So that's a nothing, that's just a sticker on and then push into place. These are a fall off, I will super glue them in place anyway. I mean, I've been told off before about super gluing stuff. These are gonna be permanent, these, are, these will never come off. As long as you don't go over the top and drench them in super glue, you're fine. But these have to be in place. I will test fit those first, make sure that these are flat and they're flat and then they fit in that way around. Oh, that actually fits. That's not straight, that's a little bit of rock in there. So I might want a little bit of bending. Very, very tiny. And then push in place. So I'll put them in. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, and now stuck. Thank you. So let me get them in place, stick, in, stick these in place, get a saucer because we're gonna need to tape off certain bits, get them in place with the two lights and then we can fit this. Now, that piece is in place, they're nice and flat and happy with the curvature. There's a tiny curvature, if that anything. I'll probably get away with it without doing anything major. So, it's asking me, ignore these, these are my power supply um, things. So they will go through the deck and off to the body. So, uh, right, so it's basically asking me to tape down two parts that I taped down, let's say, two years ago maybe three years ago because i knew these are for that but um yeah problem is i didn't actually tick off there because better take off from anywhere else so cool i knew these were going to be flashing lights for that anyway so for some reason we're going just to um there's a got you in a little bit uh right over here you're a little nubbin there and then this part here is lower, same as what's on the other section, on the actual part that's going over the top of this section here. Same on the green section over here. Let me just check, because this is gonna go in there. The red, red is red and red. And green, green is green, greeny. Let yourself go. Yes, so they are the right way around. So if we're following exact protocols, we're gonna, take off a little bit of tape when we put these which are the perfect length right there again these could be I know I keep saying glue is in place you could easily do this there is no reason why you shouldn't taking 
the full thing, if I knew then what I know now, right, that will probably be a, a, be a good 12 hour YouTube video. I would definitely not put any of these LEDs in. Anybody starting this kit off now, it is worth it. It is very worth it. To have something like this so well detailed, yes, it's very, very worth it. Now, what's going to get me a little bit is on the edge of, edge of here. It's going to light bleed through. It's very worth it. However, what I would do is not put any of these LEDs in. What I would do is I would <sighs> resin the, the windows, paint behind them, the ones that aren't um, lit, randomly, maybe even follow this one as they are, and then put a decent amount of LED strips all the way inside here. Keep the skeleton, remove the stupid circuit boards with battery packs and everything else, wire everything up back through, like I'm doing, through the saucer and then into the stand. Oh, this is such a nightmare build, but so much fun. Right, I need to cut four strips off this, which is fine because I've got parts spare and I have scissors. Yes, there we are. Right, so I need to put two over the edge of here. But what I want to do before I do that is I'm going to put some black marker pen, permanent marker pen on the end of this so that I'm reducing as much as I can for the light to go... Why are we putting tape on here? Because the light needs to come up to this section. Why is it asking that tape there? Return this to, 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 to locate the bulb. Bulb. Uh, off the starboard formation light. Cut off two strips, each measuring five millimeter by ten millimeters. Would probably just that's probably ten meters millimeters anyway. That and then just cut a five mil strip off. Um, and use it to secure the bulb as shown, keeping it clear of the neighboring screw post, which is there and over here. Okay, I understand that, otherwise, we're going to trap it. Uh, yeah, cut. Next, cut the one for the other side. Fine. Uh, finally, remove a pair of DM screws which are holding these back two here, holding as, as um, yeah, if you wanted to do the Arboretum on the back of here, I've got a video on that. Um, the, the, I, I, yeah, and it is easy to do because the part you get, which has got all the windows in it, is actually clear. You just might need to try and figure out how to put a cable, this one and this one, either side, and just put them in place. And it looks brilliant. It really does look brilliant. But what my concern is, is these tape parts. I'm putting one here, but I'm putting a bit over the top of this. And there's, these need to light up as well, don't they? Don't two green lights and two red lights need to light up? I know that it's kind of part of the, yeah. I'd rather them light up than not light up, but why have them clear to start with? Because the next part's gonna be putting tape across, putting this there, but then, this is just going to blockade any light coming onto these. Even if your source is separate, but it's showing, yay! That doesn't make any logical sense. We have LM screws on the bottom of here as well. So we're literally, literally removing the DM screws and replacing them with that. They were just holding them parts in place. There were no need to, to be honest. FM screws all the way around in the middle, done. And my two cables will come out the part here. So all I'm going to do while I'm gone, I need to... Mark pen the edges of here. I'm going to put a piece of... I'm going to ignore what Eagle Moss is... Well, Fanom is saying. I'm going to put a piece of tape across here. Right on here. And then maybe one in here just to keep the cable away from the, the screw hole. Because I want light to go up. But I'm going to also blockade the edge bit. Because when you just screw it together, right at the edge, it's going to be shining through in white. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? <sighs> Bad Eagle Moss. Right. I have another part problem as well with this, is when we find, because later in the, the part on this, there's a switch to put in. The switch is already in here. The, here, I do not know where it is. Really do not. Oh, you lucky son of a gun. <laughs> so that is there. Power supply, everything's already in. I don't have to do anything with this. 
So, all my wiring's done. Okay, give me five minutes. I'm gonna crack on with this, tape up that, tape up these lights, put this in place, and then we'll see what this looks like. Hopefully, down here. Okay, right. We've taped these in place, so they should fit over with those parts there. If they don't, then they might, yeah, they'll jiggle into place anyway. They're not, ah, oh, that's up a little bit. So I need to get that down. Black marker pen, purple marker pen, th this side of the LED. Taped in, it wants you to do a line across there and a couple on here for light bleeding, but because you've not done these, because it doesn't want light bleeding into here. Don't know, you tell me. Um, we've already got light bleeding on here anyway because, so I'd want to do one in the middle there as well. So I'm going to cut another piece, very thin tape this. So about, let's say, that big. One side. Um, I've, I've, I've decided to show you these, this bit anyway because, to be honest, this is a big part now. We're all in this together now anyway. I'm making sure that this tape is not bleeding through as best I can so when it squeezes together it's gonna show. Mm. Not perfect. I think I can work with that. <laughs> not perfect. Yeah, none of this model bill is perfect. Okay, we'll try with that. So, next part, grab all of your docking section and put your electrical cables through the centre bit. Why am I putting them through that centre bit? Because this is mine, not yours. This is where mine fits through and goes through the battle bridge and gets power. Yours will go through here for the power, unless you do extra... Oh, that's good. Extra stuff. Oh, that is not good. Power this up somewhere else. Now this is going to be a fettle because putting these together does not line up. That will, when it's screwed in place, that doesn't fit. That really needs to. That's if it if that does screw goes in there and fits like that, I'll be fine. That one doesn't, so that the lines are not perfect. Also, the black tape, I was wrong. I needs to be fully inside there. So I'm just gonna loosen that a little. So when this part here squashes into it, why will that not fit? Ooh, this isn't good. Hmm. We have screws to hold things in place, but it doesn't seem to wanna go. I mean, the gap there is phenomenally bad. <sighs> okay, this, this doesn't feel good. To me, this doesn't feel good. I think this might be down to the lighting of the Arboretum. That fits perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nip those in place now. Screw in there, screw in there, and then work my way backwards. The instructions would be a good idea by now, Ralph, but that doesn't fit at all, does it? I know there's the holes there, which will go in there, and these wires don't do a thing. They are not pushing up, they are not squeezing out, they're not doing anything, it curves up before it gets anywhere near that. Right, this is a problem. Is it my wires that's not through enough? No, it's not. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I'm gonna keep them trying it in separate, Best I can, but they're both coming through one set. There we go. There's too much of a gap inside there for my wires to go into, so it's not doing anything. It's the actual pushing in part. So hopefully with the screw in there and there, they're there, they're there, might push this in. Then we deal with this in a moment. Hmm, okay, give me five minutes. Now this part's on and I am really not happy with it. The lights are in the right place, everything's fine, everything's happy. The greens stick out further than the red, it's not flush. My cables are fine, they are not catching on anything. However, 
that gap is ridiculous. I mean, I thought I'd actually put this on and then took it off again, thinking that this part going in first and the rest come down afterwards, but it just doesn't. I've even tried to squeeze with a pair of pliers and, and I mean, you can tell there that it's it's nipping in, but it's just holding all of these parts underneath here. The best option would probably be remove all the light blocking parts and resin all the windows. That is not an option at the minute. It's not going to happen. Is it down to one of the panels not being flush when I've done the... No, because the light parts for the... Um, Arboretum are way further back up. They come downwards, not from the bottom up here. I'm going to have to go with this at the time being and see what's what. Worst case, if this fits onto the secondary hole, I can putty all the way around here. And to be honest, the putty is not far of the same colour anyway. So I might get away with quite easily doing that. If it looks stupid, and I've got this funny feeling I have seen somebody's like this and it is exactly the same. But I don't know, I really don't know. I think I need to test fit this before I go much further. So, what we got next? Here's the magazine. So, that's section D done. Test, everything works up, works it fine, done. We have only have the um, cell left. So I'll get rid of this and I need to test this in something and I need to find the nacelle. And which one do I need to find? Yep, that's it kids, both of them. Right, um, right. this is the one we are doing. This is one with the standard stuff on it. This is the bad one. This is the one where, this is the really good one because this is everything's ready. Once I'm to that stage on here, I will swap. Right, imagine this has got an LED strip through the middle, okay? So what you would need to do with this one, because if you're following this as a build along series, this is probably where we're going to be branching back to my original one is <sighs> right take this this part here which is the uh, warp deflector grills and you put that in there you watch out when you're doing inside here this part has to be flush with the metal part here if it's in a bit and it looks like that it's going to look a dog's ass so just put inside and flush it out. Basically, there's a tab there, right there. It wants to be bushed up against. So there, there, and in there. And for some reason, that is actually bent, but will come back out easy enough when it's screwed in place. Cool, AP screws coming up, all four of them. A, because they're A, and P, because they're plastic. So. One in there. Right. Screw it until it just nips in place. I'm going to go ballistic. Like I've said before, these are not going to warp speed. This is a static model. You are going to enjoy and love for generations to come. Hopefully. If not, you're going to take a couple of thousand pounds worth of model kit find somewhere really high up and throw it off. I've seen people do stuff like that. It is funny, yes, however, I would not do that because I ain't got much, much money. So, you take these two parts here, the curved parts. These are diffusion parts, even though they're clear and I can see straight through. The official way around is push that in place and they fit, but secure in place with one of these clear bits of tape that I can't see and I can't peel off either. So, oh, well, that's fun. <laughs> okay, I have to get something very thin like my tweezers, which you can see them and I can't. No, you can't because they're over there and try and Underneath this basically wraps around everything. There they are. One piece there. So it goes that way just to hold in place. Although to be honest, it's quite tight at the moment. So that's all you do with it. That's all they ask us to do is it's come almost like a, a part that really doesn't fit. 
So that goes into the front section there and just holds in place like that one did. These two here, take the one there and then take the part with the cross down on the right hand side and in and that right hand side slides inside and just pushes in place and then you go and put it there. It's kind of like a light deflector which doesn't really work. But this is their original plan. This is Eagle Moss's original plan for doing this. That's fine, we will play along with it for this sake. So there's this kind of diffusion, but not much. It kind of gives you an impression that the light's either been focused into a thin beam in the middle and it's distributed out, or it's just, it doesn't work. So cool, that can go back in my parts part. Done, so that is, ignore the part where, Right, where are we? There, right. This is how far I am with that one. The LED strip goes there, but would go in the middle. This is already pre-done with my LED strip, which is already diffused with this nice little silicon over the top of everything, and it's in place. So I would say, apart from this silver part right on here, which goes underneath, but didn't need to go underneath, because it's fine as it is, apparently. I'm not happy with it. Eh, we got there, we got there, we don't do that on mine. Duh, duh. I think we are now on to using this one for everything else. Cool, I'm happy enough with that. That will plug into the cable that comes from my pylon on my model, not on yours unfortunately, because you haven't done it exactly the same as I do. But that's the beauty of this model, we do things as we go. And we've run out of parts, and there's the start of 112, after that, there's eight more bits to go. There are literally nine more part bags to, op to open and do. We have inside here, yes, we we've seen this before, but this is the pre-painted um, Nissel Bussard collector, which looks like that when it's off, but then will light up red. I need to put two LEDs on there, as I said at the beginning, which will make that glow up like it's supposed to. And we have parts later on, so I might do that in the meantime of me not cracking on with this straight away. <sighs> what a faff. I'm not happy with the source a bit at the back, and I'm not unhappy with everything else, but they are going well. This is now done, and we are going from now on with this, and I'm happy. So, cool. 111 done, which was quite a mammoth one, because I think the restroom a little, either the little bits or there's a bit of faffing to do. So, cool. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, please like, share, subscribe, follow me on social media, consider being a Patreon. Help me be a Patreon, please. Oh, have I forgot to put something in place? I'm just looking at instructions with the PDF. No. Um, yeah, consider being a Patreon, consider a donation, help me out the best you can, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.